rival USC comes to the Big Ten after a 7-5 regular season, so they fell far short of the expectations following an 11-1 regular season the year before in which they went to the Pac-12 championship game and came within that one win of getting to the playoffs. They've got LSU in Vegas to start out, and that's just going to be a phenomenal spectacle right there for college football. Utah State and Notre Dame are the other two non-conference games. So USC always plays Notre Dame, of course, and one of the great rivalries in college football. So when they add another difficult game, as they typically do, that makes for a rough go in the non-conference schedule. So let's say they split the first two games, then they go to Michigan. They've got Wisconsin. Not easy. After they travel to Minnesota, so that makes that more difficult. Even if Minnesota turns out to be one of the worst teams in the Big Ten, it's a road game. Then they've got Penn State at home. This is tricky for Lincoln Riley and crew out of the gate. Then they get a bit of a reprieve with Maryland, Rutgers, and what should be a down Washington team. Not that you can overlook the Huskies and Jed Fish. Will Rogers at quarterback, or Dylan Will Rogers at quarterback as well. Nebraska, UCLA, and Notre Dame to finish is not easy. So, USC's path to eight wins would be defeat either LSU or Notre Dame to go two and one on conference. And then they've got to go six and three in the conference. So, let's say they lose at the big house and they lose to Penn State. They can lose one other game. It's possible, again, it's key that they defeat either LSU or Notre Dame, but USC sitting at seven and a half. That's certainly a low expectation for a football program that's run by Lincoln Riley in a third season in LA. I really wonder what UCLA season is going to look like in the post uh, Caleb Williams era, by the way. Yeah, USC. Yeah, they, this could be interesting this year for Lincoln Riley. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that they're that sold on Miller Moss to not be dipping into the transfer portal. Yeah, I mean, if if that if this is another you know seven and five or something like that kind of season, Mark, I mean, the natives are going to start to get really restless there. I would think. Yeah, you're looking at uh, a possible one and two start. Yep. And even if we give them the win against Wisconsin, which it's not out of the question that Wisconsin could pull off a small upset. Mm -hmm. They've got to play Penn State at home in the Coliseum. They should win the rest of these games. But you got to think they'll have two losses at this point to somebody, Penn State, Michigan, Wisconsin, LSU. Oh, by the way, you know, I mentioned that Wisconsin six and a half. You know who they've got non-conference, don't you, Mark? The Alabama Crimson Tide. Wow. The Kalen DeBoer era starts by uh, coming up north, Mark. They're finally doing it. The South is coming up north. Yes. We finally figured out why Nick Saban retired. He didn't want to coach a game north of Kentucky. (laughs) He did not want to come back to the Midwest. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they played Wisconsin, I think, to start the 2015 season, but I thought that was in, what, Dallas or something? Yeah, Houston, I think. One of those two places. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a Jerry World. Yeah, Yeah. that's going to be an interesting game, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun.